this is about victims. This is about young men. This is not about the Church of England. It's not about Soul Survivor Watford or Mike Pilavachi or me. They're hurting people out there and they've come forward. And there might be more. The man who took the Soul Survivor Church movement from its origins in London to Los Angeles and beyond has come forward to say that he fears he introduced hundreds of young men to a vicar who has since been accused of inappropriate conduct. Alleged victims of Reverend Canon Mike Pilavachi, founder of the Soul Survivor Church in Watford and its popular summer youth festivals, came forward with allegations for the first time this month, claiming that he ran what they called a cult in which young men were encouraged to receive full body oil massage in their underwear and engage in wrestling matches with the celibate preacher. One day he asked me what I did, and I said I was a pastor, I was a vicar, and he asked me about my church, and he just said, you know, if I went to church, that's the sort of church I'd like to go to. Victims claim they suffered psychological torment and spiritual abuse, and say the vicar left a trail of broken young male adults scattered all around the world. The man who brought the Soul Survivor Church to the USA, Paul Martin, has said he assumed the UK Soul Survivor leaders dealt with it 20 years ago, when he claims they became aware of allegations. So I learned about the issue in 2002, and then in 2004, I heard about another incident where Mike was confronted and leadership was told about inappropriate behavior. For me, I'm living 6,000 miles away, and I just make the assumption that the authorities in the UK would make sure that this issue was properly dealt with and that any potential victims uh, would be protected. I just learned last month that it wasn't dealt with. I have responsibility because I brought Mike to this country dozens of times, and I bear the responsibility of bringing Mike Pilavachi to the US. Mike Pilavachi is a 65-year-old charismatic evangelist who founded the Soul Survivor Watford Church and its annual summer festivals, which ran from 1993 to 2019. On average, 30,000 teenagers attended these festivals from all around the world. In 2023, it emerged he was stepping back from the Church of England's ministry amid an ongoing internal investigation and following allegations revealed by The Telegraph detailing how he had formed inappropriate intimate relationships with young people. Mike was always traveling with young men. By young men, I mean 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I did notice pretty early on that the young men were always quite handsome and quite fit. And I didn't see it as a red flag, but in retrospect, I would see it as a yellow flag. The relationship with Mike and these young men uh, was always fun and convivial. They would joke around, Mike would make fun of them, they would make fun of Mike. Now, you need a model, and we have selected the best, me. I'm posing. I'm still posing. I never witnessed anything that seemed nefarious at all. I did see the young men, I saw the good looking young men, and there were a few times where I would see these young men massaging Mike's shoulders, for example, in the green room, but there would be 10, 15 people around. So there was nothing, I guess, strange about that. I, you know, and I say this to young people at Soul Survivor, I am now 56 years old, and I have never once had sex with anything, animal, vegetable, or mineral. And I'm okay, I'm okay. I've managed to live an okay life, a good life. And you know, when you choose to give yourself completely, in a sense, to serving the Lord and to make the most of all the one life you have, just, I'm saying, I'm not saying this to boast, I'm just saying this because this is how it can work. Many of the alleged victims first encountered Mike Pilavachi through the church's gap year program. Some became either his official or unofficial interns and described him as a magnetic and powerful man with a direct dial to God who could determine their future within the church. They also claim he would shower them with attention and promises of a prestigious life within the ministry traveling the world alongside him to exotic destinations on mission trips, or the chance to preach and play music on stage, only to be ignored and dropped later. It's the norm for people to want to be silent. It's the norm for perpetrators to want silence. 
That is the systemic issue with power abuse, with spiritual abuse. I'm speaking up not because I'm culpable. I assumed that the UK, that the powers that be in the Church of England, the Diocese of St. Albans, and the Soul Survivor Trustees had dealt with this issue. I'm speaking now out of a sense of duty and responsibility because I single-handedly was the one to launch this ministry in the U.S. and bring Mike here dozens of times. And specifically, I put Mike in front of thousands upon thousands of people and thousands of young men. I don't know what's happened here in the U.S. I don't know if there were any violations in the U.S. But given what we know now, it's my duty to speak on behalf of potential victims here. Former Soul Survivor staff members, as well as Mike Pilavachi's alleged victims, claim that in hindsight they were part of a conveyor belt of young, athletic, attractive men, usually aged around 18 to 21, from broken homes or with traumatic childhoods. They claim they were preyed upon and made to feel special by their celibate vicar, who they say led them to believe he held the key to their careers, happiness and futures. The purpose of ministry is to protect people. The very core of the person of Jesus Christ is to bring healing and hope and restoration to people, not to abuse and break. That has happened here. I want to speak on behalf of the victims and those who have yet to come out. We need to be on their side because it's about them. Weeks after allegations surrounding Mike Pilavachi were made public, Paul Martin raised concerns with sole survivor Watford leadership that his smiling photo beneath the title of associate pastor, along with his bio, remained on the church website. It took three weeks, but has finally been taken down. Concerns remain that the full extent of the allegations, as well as the time span within which Mike Pilavachi was operating, remains unknown. I was disappointed. They've known about this for 20 years. He remained on their website for nearly a month. Uh, I'm not sure an investigation by the Church of England is an independent investigation, given that it's part of the denomination. I'm concerned, gravely concerned, because this has been going on for 20 years and I hope they get it right. I have not been confident so far. I feel sad. I feel, I feel betrayed. Not even so much by Mike, but most certainly by Mike. But there are victims that are devastated, and there are probably more.